Okay, we're going to learn about projectiles launched at angles today. And it's a little bit different, uh, a lot of the same concepts, but uh, now we've got an angle thrown in. So let's see how that changes things. Um, so hopefully you have your guided notes, chapter 5 guided notes out. Uh, there's something to write down right here. If the projectile was launched at an angle, the velocity must be broken into components. So now we have this projectile being launched at an angle. Well, we need to break its uh, motion into components, horizontal and vertical. Components means parts. So and those parts are the horizontal and vertical velocities. So for example, if the projectile is going at some angle theta here, you need to figure out what its initial velocity was in the x direction, horizontal. And we'll need to be able to calculate its initial velocity in the y direction or the vertical direction. Okay? So I call this one VOX, initial velocity in the x direction, because it's along the x-axis. It's horizontal. I call this one VOY because it's the initial velocity in the y direction. And how can we solve for those guys? If we have velocity but it's at an angle, how can we solve for it? Yes, trigonometry. So hopefully you remember this. Let's put this down on your notes. Okay. So Katoa. So we're going to be going through the trigonometry functions again. Let's get started. Practice problem number 10. It says a place kicker kicks a football with a velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 53 degrees. Step number one is always the same. What is it? Picture. Draw a picture. Okay. Let's draw a picture of this place kicker. Here's my football. He's going to kick it at some angle. Okay. 53 degrees. At 20 meters per second. So 20 meters per second is, our, is, is what is going to be our hypotenuse. Now we need to break that initial velocity into its component parts. You do that with a triangle, okay? Whoops. That's kind of not the straightest triangle, but uh, what is theta? 53 goes right here. He kicked it at an angle of 53 degrees. Okay? So we've got our picture. We know that that football is going to be kicked and then it's going to follow the parabola-like trajectory until it hits the ground again. So somewhere over here, it's going to hit the ground. There's our picture. Before we start though, let's start by breaking its initial velocity into its component parts. I'm going to call this one velocity initial in the x, VOX, and I'm going to call this side of the triangle VOY. That's the initial velocity in the y direction. Now let's use some trigonometry to solve for what they are. Okay, let's do uh, initial velocity in the x first. What trig function should we use? <coughs> VOX, it's, it, it's the side of the triangle right next. Cosine. So yeah, let's use cosine, which is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So let's do that right here. Cosine of 53 is equal to the adjacent, which is VOX, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 20. Now, how do we solve for VOX? What do you have to do first? Times both sides by 20. Is that VOX or VOY? VOX right here, sorry. Okay, so you times both sides by 20. And so VOX is equal to 20 times the cosine of 53. Okay, so let's grab a calculator and do that. Good. 20 times the cosine of 53 is 12.04 meters per second. Now, guys, let's put that into our picture down here. That means horizontally it initially started at 12 <coughs> 0.04 meters per second. Now let's solve for initial velocity in the y direction. 
sine. Good, because it's, it's the opposite side of that triangle. So we're going to use sine of 53 is equal to VOY divided by the hypotenuse. So it's opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse was 20. Again, we times both sides by 20. 20s will cancel out there, and so VOY is equal to 20 times the sine of 53. Perfect, good job. So that does equal, let's put it on our picture, 15.97 meters per second. After that, guys, it's pretty much similar to how we've done the problems in the past. We need to break up its motion, this football's motion, into a horizontal. So I'd like you to write down horizontal and then vertical. Okay. Now horizontally, we've got three variables to know. Do we know displacement? Do we know how far that football went? No. Nope. So I'm going to put a question mark. Do we know the velocity horizontally? We do. What is it? Yeah, now this is where you got to be careful. Pick the horizontal one, so 12.04 goes here. And what was time? We don't know. We don't know, so I'm going to put a question mark. Okay, let's list our vertical. There are seven variables here. Do we know time initial? Zero. Do we know velocity initial? We do know it, right? What was velocity vertically initially? 15.97. Okay, do I know displacement initial? Zero. Do I know acceleration of this football? Negative. Good, negative 9.8. Do I know, let's do the final ones. Do I know time final? No. Nope. Do I know velocity final? No. Nope. And here's one to think about. Do I know displacement final vertically? Yeah, it's on a football field, even though I didn't draw it very level right here. We're assuming that it's going to come back and hit the ground, and the ground is level on a football field. So the displacement is going to be zero. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. That's vertical. Vertical. Displacement Why? vertically is zero. Yeah. Why would velocity final not be Well, okay, yeah, and that's a question that a lot of students have. How come, guys, velocity final we don't know? When I'm saying velocity final, I'm mentioning it as a projectile. A projectile is not on the ground, right? So when I say velocity final, it's right before it hits the ground. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, because, of course, once it hits the ground, it's going to come to a stop, isn't it? And it would be zero. A lot of students want to say that's zero, but it's not. All right, we don't even know what it was asking us, and I think I wrote over the questions, but it says, how long is the ball in the air? How far away does it land? And how high does it travel? Okay, those are the three questions that we need to answer. So I'm going to back that up, and we'll solve for time in the air. Okay, can I use equation number one and solve for time in the air horizontally? And the answer to that is no, because I have two variables I don't know. So again, Let's put a box around time final in the vertical column. This is the one we need to solve for. Part B was saying how far did it go horizontally, so I'm going to put a box around that one. And then C, we'll solve, to, uh, we'll solve part C when we get there. Let's get A and B uh, solved first, though. So let's solve for time that this football is in the air. So if he kicks it, how much time is it going to be in the air? What's the equation that we can go to first? Number four, if you look at equation number four, I'm going to write it down. Displacement is equal to velocity initial times time plus one half at squared. Let's see if we can use this one to solve for time. I think we can. This is a vertical equation, so we're going to be using this information in the vertical column. What's my displacement? Zero. What was my initial velocity? 15.97. Do we know time? 
We don't, so I'm just going to keep calling it T. Plus, one half, what's A? Negative 9.8, and T, do we know it? We don't, so I'm just going to call it T squared. Now let's simplify that as much as we can. Okay. Now I don't like the fact that this T squared uh, value here is negative. So what I like to do is, is slide it to the other side, add it to both sides. So let's add 4.9 T squared to both sides. It comes over here. 4.9 t squared is going to be positive. But I also want this term to be on the left side as well. If I take it to the other side, what's going to happen to its sign? It's going to become negative 15.97 t. And that's all going to equal zero. You see why I did that? Because now this t squared value is positive. I know this one became negative, but uh, it works out better that way. Okay, now we're solving for t. There's a couple of ways you could do it. The easiest way is to uh, factor a t out. Do you guys know what I mean when I say factor a t? Yeah. So I'm going to bring a t out in front of this equation. And what's left inside? What's left right here, guys? 4.9 t. Because if you, if you distribute this t, it's going to be t squared. Minus what? 15.97. And all of that's going to still be equal to zero. You see what we did there? That's called factoring a t out. <coughs> if you were to distribute this t, you would get this equation back, right? Yes. So all we did was factor the t out. OK, now we're solving for t. There's going to be a couple of answers for t. One of them, let's talk about this t right here. How do you, get, how do you solve for this t? Well, you would divide both sides by t. And 0 divided by t is what? So it would cancel out there, but what does it equal over here? What does t equal? Yeah, one of my, one of my um, answers for t is 0. But can time equal 0? I mean, he kicked the ball. It's not, that's not possible, is it? So that one, it's impossible. What we are interested in is the one that's in the inside of the parentheses here. So 4.9t minus 15.97 is equal to 0. So you set both t's equal to 0. Now let's solve for it. What I would do is slide the 15.97 over to the right. So you get 4.9t is equal to 15.97. That becomes positive when you add it to both sides. Now it's pretty evident how you solve for t. What do you do? Divide. Divide by 4.9, both sides? Yes, sir. OK, it cancels out there. And time will be equal to 15.97. 3.25. Perfect. Yes, you got it right. So time, I'm running out of space here. I'm going to put it right here. Time that it's in the air is 3.26 seconds. I'm going to circle it down here so I don't lose it. 3.26 seconds. OK, we solved for time. That goes right here in the vertical column. But doesn't that also, isn't that the time that it's in the air horizontally? Yeah, and so we've got an answer here now. 3.26 seconds. So that's part A. Let's go to part B. How far does it land? Now we're looking for the distance from here to where it lands. That's called the horizontal displacement. What equation can we use to solve for that? The first one. Displacement is equal to Vt. Let's plug it in. The velocity, let's use the horizontal velocity now, 12.04 times time, 3.26. And now that we have solved already for time, we plug it in here. 39.25. 39 so displacement is equal to 39.25 what? Meters. Meters. Okay. So there's B. Okay. 
Now, I think it's important to understand what that means. If he kicked it at 20 meter, meters per second at this angle, that ball would hit the ground. And the point at which it hits the ground from where he kicked it would be 39.25 meters. Now, is the ball going to keep moving after it hits the ground? Yeah. Sure, and it's probably got some momentum. It's probably going to bounce and come to rest over there. But we are just concerned about the projectile part of this football's path, which is in the air until it hits the ground. Of course, it's going to hit and bounce, and, and it might roll farther than that. But that's the point at which it hits the ground. And so 39.25 meters. Now, what was part C? What did it ask? How high does it go? How high does this thing go? Here's something that you've got to realize. When, when you throw something up, say this is, this is you, and you throw a ball into the air, and it comes back down, and you catch it, and say that took five seconds. At what time point was it at its highest point? Yeah, it takes 2.5 seconds to get up there, and then it's going to take 2.5 seconds to get down. So whenever you throw something in the air, if you know it's total time in the air, at its highest point, you just take half of it. Do we see that? It's the same amount of time to go up as it is to come down because gravity's acting on it. Gravity's pulling just as strong on its way up as it is on its way down. So, okay, so with that known, what's the time value that I could use to solve for when it's right here at its highest point? How much time was that? 1.6. Good. Let's take this total time and divide it by 2. So, what was that again, Clint? 1.63. 1.63 seconds. At 1.63 seconds, it's going to be at its highest point. If we know that, can we use a vertical equation to solve for a vertical displacement there? What about equation four? Can we use that? I think so. So let's try it. Equation number four, and I'm running out of room. Let's try it over here. So displacement is equal to velocity initial times time plus one half at squared. Let's plug in. What was displacement, guys? Well, that's the one we don't know, right? We want to know how high it goes. So we don't know it. What was the initial velocity? And we're talking vertically again, so that's 15.97. Now, what's the time? We do know the time. What was it? 1.63 at its highest point, plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times time again was 1.63, but I've got to square it. Okay, so there's a simple equation, we just got to simplify it. So displacement is equal to 26.0311 plus Thirteen point zero one eight eight one, <coughs> but it's net, but it's a negative. So what do I need to do? Plus a negative, right? So if the answer comes out to be twenty six point zero three minus thirteen point zero two. What does that equal? Thirteen point oh one, and that's meters, right? So that's kind of cool. We can figure out a lot of different things about this football. How much time it was in the air total? How far did it go? Its range, and we can figure out its highest point. How high was it at its highest point? And that would have been thirteen point oh one meters. All right, very good. Let's see if we got these right. Um, so on A was 3.27. Did we get that? 3.26. Close enough. Okay, B was 39.2. Did we get that? 39.25. And C was 13.1, which uh, is what we got there. 
Okay, a lot of work, but uh, kind of interesting problems when we sit down and, and, and can determine all of that stuff. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, I want to I wanna go through practice problem number 11. It says a soccer player kicks the ball with a velocity of 15, point, or, or 15 meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees from the ground. A, what is the horizontal component of its starting velocity? B, what is its vertical component of starting velocity? And part C, how long will the ball be in the air before it hits the ground? And then I guess there's D, how far will the ball travel horizontally before it hits the ground? So again, I want you to draw a picture, find the initial horizontal and vertical velocities using trigonometry, break its motion into horizontal and vertical, list all the variables, and let's see if you can get to that point. So if you're watching the video, please hit pause and try doing this problem. Okay, so I went ahead and solved for our initial velocity in the x, and I solved that it was 14.1 meters per second, and I solved for voy, which is initial velocity in the y, using trigonometry here. So hopefully this kind of helps you see how to do that and uh, that you were able to get that far. Then I went and uh, broke the motion into its horizontal and vertical parts. Horizontally, it has three variables we need to know. We don't know how far the soccer ball went horizontally. That's horizontal displacement. So it's going to come over here and it's going to land right there. But we don't know what that displacement was, so I put a question mark. We do know its velocity horizontally was 14.1. And we don't know how long it's going to be in the air. Vertically, now we do know a few things. Its initial velocity vertically was 5.13, so I put that in there. We also know its displacement vertical. Okay, a soccer field again is going to be level. So if you kick it at this point, it's gonna go up, of course, but then it's gonna come back down to the spot that it was at, vertical. So vertical displacement is zero. Okay, now if we wanna solve for these, these um, questions here, on A it says, what's the horizontal component? That's 14.1. On B, what is the vertical component? That's 5.13. C, how long will the ball be in the air? So we're looking for how long, it's, it's a time. I can't use horizontal equation because I don't know two variables. So again, we're gonna solve for time vertically using a vertical equation, and then uh, we'll solve it that way. <coughs> Okay, let's go to that point. Um, if I were you, the vertical equation that you use most often is number four. Displacement is equal to velocity initial times time plus one half at squared. I'd like you to hit pause in your video and see if you can go through and solve for time with this vertical equation. I'm gonna go ahead and solve it. So um, when you have your answer, and hit play. Okay, so hopefully you have worked out um, from equation number four. Remember, we're starting with the initial velocity vertically, so put in 5.13 here. And then if you solve for t, again, you're gonna have to factor the t out here. But when you do, t is either gonna equal zero, which we know is not the case, or t is gonna equal 1.05 seconds, and that's obviously the one we're looking for. So the soccer ball, when he kicks it, is gonna be in the air for 1.05 seconds. Now let's answer uh, the last part. How far will the ball travel horizontally? So we're looking from this point to this point. That's known as the uh, horizontal displacement. Again, it's horizontal, so we can only use one equation, which was d is equal to vt. It's equation number one. Now let's plug in the variables that we know. We don't know displacement, but we do know velocity was 14.1 horizontally. And now we can use this time value and plug it in here. So we do know time was 1.05 seconds. Okay, good, so 14.1 times 
14.81. And what are the units going to be, guys? Meters. Good. So he didn't kick it all that far, but I mean, it really wasn't going that fast, 15 meters per second for that angle. So it would have hit 14.81 meters away. Did we get it, guys? Who got it? Good job. Okay, practice problem number 12. Let's get started on this one. It says, a cannonball is launched at ground level at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal with an initial velocity of 26 meters per second. How far does the cannonball travel horizontally before it reaches the ground? So I would like you guys to draw a picture Find your initial velocity in the x, your initial velocity in the y. Break its motion up into horizontal and vertical. List all the variables, and we'll take it from there. If you're watching the video, please try and do that. And I'm going to hit pause and, uh, and work the problem. And so see if you can take it that far. OK, so hopefully you were able to uh, draw a picture, solve for VOX, VOY, and put them on your picture as well. Break it into horizontal, vertical, and list all your variables. And hopefully your magnitudes of those variables are similar to mine. So now what we really want to do is solve for how far this cannonball goes before it hits the ground again. So it's going to hit the ground over at this point. We want to know how far that was. That is horizontal displacement, so I like to put a box around it. That's the one we're solving for. But I can't use equation number one because there's two unknowns. So again, we have to solve for time with the vertical equation. And then once we have that time, we can go and use equation number one and solve for displacement. So that's my path. I would like you guys to try it. Um, so if you're watching the video, try it um, on your own first. So hit pause for a second and try it. And once you have your answer, hit play and see if you got it right. Okay, so I went ahead and used equation number four. And if you solve it correctly, guys, you should, you know, factor out a t here. T is either going to be equal to zero or 2.65 seconds. Obviously, zero is not the right answer. So we're going to go with the time was 2.65 seconds. We can plug that in over here for our horizontal time as well. And then we can use equation number one. Displacement is equal to velocity horizontal times time. And you should get the cannonball had a range of 59.7 meters before it hit the ground. So anyway, hopefully that uh, kind of makes sense. I've got one more practice problem. Now, let me go back to this one. Guys, what made this problem easier was that we didn't have a displacement. This cannonball came back down and hit the ground at the same point it was launched from. But they can get more complicated if we have a vertical displacement. And that's what, uh, and if you do have a vertical displacement here, can you just factor a t out and solve it that way? No. No. Nope. You're going to have to do what? Use the quadratic formula. So let's do a practice problem like that. This is complex. Let's read it. While standing on a 200 meter high cliff, you throw a rock at an angle of 45 degrees with a velocity of 12 meters per second. How far from the base of the cliff will your rock land? The release point of the rock is 1.5 meters above the top of the cliff. Haven't we all done this before, guys? You're on, you're on a cliff and you, you chuck a rock and you wonder how far it goes from where you're at? Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, we've all done this, but now we can use the physics of, and actually solve it. So. Um, Let's get started. I'm going to go through this one with you. Okay, so we've got this cliff here. Okay, and you're standing on, on this cliff. Okay, and you're throwing this rock. So here's the rock that you're going to throw. You throw it at an angle of 45 degrees. So 45 goes in right there. And you, uh, you kind of just lobbed it at 12 meters per second. So 12 goes there. Now we're going to solve for VOX. 
and we're going to solve for VOY. So let's do that real fast. So VOX is going to be equal to 12 times the cosine of 45. And VOY is going to be equal to 12 times the sine of 45. So you should get that VOX is equal to 8.49 meters per second. So I'm going to put that in over here, 8.49 meters per second. And VOY, guys, if it's at a 45 degree angle, what are you noticing? They're both the same. You can put that in your calculator, but it's going to come out exactly the same. And that's because it's at a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay. Now, this is the part that I wanted to go over with you guys. Um, so you throw this rock. It's going to have this kind of projectile motion. Its trajectory is going to look like this. It's going to come down, and it's going to hit the ground down here and land. The tricky part about this question is this was a 200 meter high cliff, but you're standing on the edge of the cliff and it's your release point was what? 1.5 meters above the top of the cliff. So when you're trying to figure out its displacement, what's the displacement of this rock going to be? Vertically? Yeah, minus 200, but we, don't we also have to add in the 1.5 that you're standing? Oh, yeah. So your vertical displacement is going to be a negative 201.5 meters. Okay, I want to pause the video at this point. I would like you to write down horizontal <laughs> and vertical. And I want you guys to go through and list your variables and, and try to solve this, okay? We're really looking for horizontal displacement. And see what you have to do. Okay, so if you're watching the video, hit pause. Try to take it as far as you can and then hit play and see, see if we can solve this problem. Okay, so hopefully you were able to list horizontally and, and, and list the three variables here and vertical and list all seven variables here. Now, most importantly, this vertical displacement is going to be a negative 201.5 because we had to add in the 1.5 meters that you were standing and, and released it at. So hopefully we're able to take it to that point. Now we really want to solve for our horizontal displacement so I like to put a box around the one that we really want to solve for. But we can't use equation number one yet because we don't have time. So again you're going to solve for time vertically. Pick a vertical equation, probably number four. Solve for time vertically. Once you have it, you're going to plug it in right there. Use equation number one and solve for displacement. So again, try it. Try it on your own. I'm going to solve it. Um, so please hit pause in your video right now and uh, try it on your own. OK, so hopefully you picked equation number four. You plugged in your vertical variables correctly and you get down to the point to where you're uh, you have a t squared value you have a t value and now we have a displacement here which is what makes this problem a little more difficult because we can't factor a t out anymore we can't complete the square because these numbers just are not nice so what do you do to solve this quadratic equation the only thing you can basically do to this point is use the quadratic formula. So let's write it down. T is equal to a minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now, again, as a review, this is our A term. The negative 8.49 is our B term. And the negative, two point, or 201.5 is our C 
term in that quadratic formula. So I'm going to let uh, you guys try and plug these into the quadratic formula now and see if you can't solve for t. Okay, so try it to that point. Again, hit pause, try it on your own, and then hit play. Okay, so hopefully we're able to plug in those values into your quadratic formula. And this was what I did step one. I simplified it a little more here and simplified it a little more here. And finally, we get to t is equal to 8.49 plus or minus 63.4 divided by 9.8. Now, guys, will time ever be negative? No. It won't. So you can save yourself a little bit of time. If you went 8.49 minus 63.4, that's going to be negative, right? And that's not going to be the right answer. So always take the positive one here. So 8.49 plus 63.4 and then divide that by 9.8. Do you guys get that the time that it was in the air was 7.3 seconds? So if it's in the air for 7.3 seconds. Now once we know the amount of time that it's in the air, we can plug that back in for our horizontal equation. Let me just do that up here. Displacement is equal to Vt. Displacement is equal to its horizontal velocity, which was 8.49, times the time that it was in the air, we just saw for it, 7.3 seconds. Good, so 8.49, 62.3, and that's going to be meters. So it's going to fly out here and it's going to hit somewhere. 62.3 meters away from the base of the cliff. Can anyone uh, verify this one? That's what we got. Okay, so hopefully that is what you got. If not, try to follow back where I um, where I was going through the problem. See where your numbers are different than mine. So. Before we, before we end the video, you now have enough knowledge to go through. There's a worksheet in the student workbook called Projectiles at Angles Worksheet. Uh, again, it's called Projectiles at Angles Worksheet. And uh, head there and see if you can get some more practice with these types of problems. So anyway, hopefully that helped.